Okay, so Be'ezras Hashem, we're going to be continuing with recovery in the Torah. And in this week's Parsha, we really, really encounter something profoundly significant when it comes to the nature of what it means to be a human being in this world, and that is the Nisayun of the Akedah. The Nisayun of the Akedah, the test of the Akedah, was a symbol of all tests in general, but it was singular in its nature because of its traumatic element. But in trying to understand the true aspect, the true kernel of the test itself of the Akedah. So there's a Joshua Saran that the Meishilach is going to build himself off of, and Rav Kuk is going to continue in the same vein. The Joshua Saran describes that the essential test, the essential matter at the heart of the Akedah was the language of Na, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu requests from Avram Avinu to please go ahead and follow through with this task. Now Rashi says, Ein na elalashan bakasha, that the language of na, the language of please, of beseechment, is not a command. It's not a dictum that a person needs to follow through in order to maintain the status quo. There's nothing dependent on it. What it is, is a request. It's a request that's free from any dependency. A request that's free from any form of necessity that is propelling me one way or the other. That language of na, that request of please, placed Avram Avinu in what Rav Kook describes as the full and total expression of bechira, free will, the terrifying nature of human responsibility and freedom that rests at the core of what it is that makes us our best selves and what it is that makes us lo aleinu our worst selves, the ability to choose, the nakuda of bechira. We spend most of our lives, we spend most of our waking hours either unaware of Bechira or fighting against the nature of Bechira by doubling down into the habituated nature of our experience in this world. Habituation, natural tendencies, the basic functioning that continues without any volitional choice in the moment to moment takes away a lot of the issues, a lot of the anxiety at the heart of human experience, because I do what I have always done, and what I've always done has continued to work, and therefore I will continue to do what I've always done. And by doing what has always been done, by engaging with whatever model of thinking we've always engaged with, we allow ourselves to flow ever so smoothly down the path of least resistance where I don't have to overcome myself today. I don't have to decide today. I don't have to make a hachlata or a decision as to how I want my life to go today because life will carry me today. A nisayon is the opportunity for a person to recognize that, oh my goodness, if I am not responsible, if I'm not focusing in on the decision orientation of the day-to-day moments in my life, and ultimately the main decision is how am I going to see the circumstances? How am I going to choose to look at the world? But if I do not engage in that natural point, that responsibility of Bechira, life is going to be overcome and inundated with the natural flow of natural proclivity towards things, what the Chazonish referred to as Haznach HaSachayim Lazarim HaTivi. So when Avram Avinu is asked, no, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, please. So at that point, Rav Kook says that Avram Avinu relinquished any element of compulsion, any element of compulsion, inner or outer, and he was left with the pure nature of a decision, and that itself is terrifying. What does one do when come face to face with the recognition that the matter is dependent on me? The way I decide right now is going to be the outcome of the situation, is going to be the direction in which life is going to continue to go. Furthermore, taking it out of the philosophical psychology of Bechira or free will, the Meshiloach softens this dilemma of Avram Avinu and creates more of a modern sensibility that we find ourselves in on the regular. Meaning to say that the Nisayun of the Akedah or any Nisayun is not simply a singular moment and act, but rather it is a perpetual state that is accessible vis-a-vis the mind if it's honest enough with itself about how it feels in the moment. Zat the Meshiloach, the secret of Na, is what the Zohar HaKadosh refers to as Ba'aspeklaria Deloi Nuhara. That there were two ways in which the Nevi'im, the prophets, those who were close to the Rabbani Shleilam, the chariots of the Rabbani Shleilam, each and every one of us, encounter the messages that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is sending to us throughout reality, throughout our lives, throughout ourselves. One emerges through something called the clear lens, the Aspeklaria de Nehoira, where things are clear, vivified, it's very clear what I need to do, it's not so much of a question of what is right or wrong in my subjective stance in this moment, I know exactly what the marching orders are to do, and there is really no Nisayun of Bechira. 
That's the cultivation of habit. That's the cultivation of healthy morals and responsibilities, which gives me the ability to remove any handicap that would prevent me from doing the right thing in the moment where it's clear. And then there's the place of Aspaklaria de Loinura, those stages of concealed vision, of a clouded lens, where it's not clear to me what's right. I don't know what's right in this situation. My subjective feelings, my emotions are tied up in it. Experience is tied up in it. Reality is tied up in it. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm angry. I'm lonely. I'm scared. I'm anxious. All of the various things are now influencing who I am in relationship to what this moment is. And I just don't know. I don't have that sturdy ground of certainty to rest upon right now. Here, the ground has been taken away from me. I don't know how to act. I don't know what the right thing to do in this circumstances. And in that moment, the person comes face to face with the recognition that I have to choose. I have to choose how I want life to go right now, how I want to see myself. Am I going to see myself through a lens of hopelessness because I fell? Or will I see myself with the lens of light because I know that I've fallen before and I could get up again? It's up to me. I don't know what the right thing to do is in this situation. And in that stage of aspakarlia de loinuhara, of the clouded lens, the individual is left without the fences and singularly engaged with the secret of bechira, of free will, that power that rests at the heart, the heart of the human being. And the etza, the recognition, the suggestion that Avram Avinu teaches us, the suggestion that the wisdom of recovery teaches us, is that in those moments of pure Bechira, where it is up to us to completely lean into reality with full control, because HaKadosh Baruch Hu, my higher power, has removed himself from me so that I can choose volitionally, at that moment, instead of falling into the mind trap of thinking that I am absolutely in control, I need to remember that what I am absolutely in control of is recognizing that I am not in control. Yes, I have Bechira. Yes, I can be Bechir. Yes, I'm the one who has to choose right now. But what I choose to recognize is that I'm not the one who's ultimately choosing. It's you, Hashem. It's what's referred to as Bechira Biyadiyah, of choosing to live in accordance with the fact that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is everywhere and everything. And even in this situation where I feel completely abandoned in terms of how I need to make the next volitional choice, I'm aware that every ounce of myself is only made, motivated through the higher power that moves through me. That I'm a shliach, when a person recognizes their shlichos, when a person recognizes that in truth I am not a self, I am simply a messenger for the infinite one, for the holy one, blessed is he, for the rabbinic shloilam. At that point, I can choose to do what comes most naturally to me, and what comes most naturally to me is to do the next right thing. I choose to live with the foreknowledge that I don't have free choice at the end of the day. That my choice is to choose to recognize that the free choice that I feel that I'm choosing is not as free and is not as much of a choice as I conceive it to be because I'm choosing to believe that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is everywhere and everything. And in that moment, in spite of the fact that Avram Avinu had the Nisayun of what to do actively, the Torah reveals a profound secret. Vayishlach Avram Asyado. Avram Avinu had to move his own arm. Because the natural proclivity of the self is to be aware of exactly what the Rabbani Shalom wants, exactly what the next right thing to do is. And by choosing, there's going to be a revelation that I didn't truly choose what the outcome of this circumstance is. It's choosing to live with a mindset of Yediyah. It's choosing to recognize, I don't know. In this moment, I don't know. All I can rely on is the fact that all I have is the Rabbani Shalom. And in that place, in that place when a person is capable of making a choice, of elevating themselves and sacrificing themselves for the Rabbani Shlilam, sacrificing any foreknowledge of self, in that moment, there's going to be the giloi of the Akeda, the giloi of the Seh, the giloi of Aye Hasela Oila, the giloi of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is present even when I feel that he's not present. And in that place of the sleeplessness that is rendered by that freedom of choice, a person comes to choose to recognize that in the end of the day, I don't truly have so much choice. I can choose to be aware of the fact that I'm powerless, and that's my power. And when I utilize my last vestige of power to acknowledge my powerlessness, I become a vessel and a receptacle for the Rabbani Shalom in this world, and I become part and parcel of the unfolding story of Knesset Yisrael and the process of recovery as well, Be'ezrus Hashem.